I grew up in a park too, watching the riders, right? I grew up seeing it every Sunday. So if you're trying to get rid of dirt bike culture, you're also getting rid of my blackness. And that not only hurt, but it made me again, hate this city. And again, when I hate stuff, I fight. So dirt bikes have a long history in Baltimore. Um, in the 70s was a great migration. The motorbikes came to the country. Um, Baltimore was more hilly and grassy, so in the 80s, as it became more black, um, people were riding in the parks. And then YouTube started around 2007, so it was like an explosion. And now you can see riding, not just on Sundays, like when I was growing up, but around the country. And when people ride on Sundays, that's an old to Baltimore, the dirt bike capital. My name is Brittany Young. I'm the founder and CEO of B360. So I grew up in Northwest Baltimore, which is literally the tale of two cities. I grew up on one side of Park Heights, which was, think of the war on drugs in Baltimore in the 90s. I'm on this block, everybody knew Miss Lou, but that's my grandma's house right there. Yeah, but you know, everybody used to live here as long ago. Like, it was bad, but it wasn't like, it wasn't unsafe to be a kid in the yard. You know, we could actually like walk around. Now, absolutely not. Um, the Tale of Two Cities, I mean, the real book. L. Yeah, the white L is literally an L. So Baltimore is like this. The black butterfly, just like how it sounds, a butterfly of sprinkling black neighborhoods. In between is an L. Um, the L has historically been white. Black butterfly historically been black. Before integration, all of it was white. And so once redlining changed, so did the demographics. You can literally live in the same zip code as someone that's five minutes away, but your experiences are different. The safety is different. The school is different. I always tell people we're the best of a city, but we also made some of the worst decisions that shaped the whole country. my family would ever say I was like a good kid. <laughs> um, smart, too smart, but I don't think anyone ever knew like, you know, where that talent could go. I don't think there's anything I can't read and figure out. And so this is, you know, between, before YouTube, we had Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, that was me. I used to be a very big reader. I'm just a, ner a nerd. I'm actually a geek, but yeah, I'm a geek. You know, I'm social, like I'm cool and fun, but like, no, I really like to learn. So by the time I was in second grade, I was telling my teacher, you know, I want to be an engineer, but all she saw was a bad kid that was always fighting next to the principal. So she told me I couldn't go into any industry like that because I'm black, my parents didn't go to college. Good thing is I didn't listen in second grade, but that conversation kept going. Um, I got my first black teacher in third grade. She was the person that finally like listened to this crazy little girl. So Miss Taylor was my first black teacher. So literally somebody looked like me. She was jazzy, she was fly. She had red nails. Miss Taylor really put in perspective of the roles of teachers and the roles of good educators. Like she really changed my whole trajectory of what I knew was possible. Um, and by the time I got to high school, yeah, I knew I was ready to go to college and get away. That was what I thought. I had a lot of top choices. I got into all of my schools from MIT to Hopkins, and that's what I thought that I was about to be a Kimmy, making six figures. Baltimore, who comes back to this? But that changed when my mom passed my second to school. I got my scholarship at a 3.9. I barely had a 2.7. I lost my scholarship my first semester. And what I didn't know what I was dealing with was like depression and grief. I wish somebody would have told me it's okay to not be okay, because I was pretending really hard. My mom died of a stress-induced heart attack, right? So it reminds me to, um, again, that quote, 
give light, but save some for yourself. Yeah, so this is the famous Drill Hill Park. But here, specifically on this street, when I was growing up, this is where the riders used to be. So in 2012, um, city council created a city ordinance as for unregistered motor vehicles, i.e. dirt bikes and anything you can't register, that makes possession of a dirt bike a misdemeanor, um, riding on public property, riding on private property, and up to a $1,000 fine. In 2015 going to 2016, then to implement the law, a dirt bike police task force was created. Baltimore police launched a special task force nearly two months ago, aimed at putting the brakes on illegal dirt bikes in the city. Watching from above, the police can spot riders and stashed bikes. Anyone arrested for riding or hiding a dirt bike in Charm City can face up to 90 days in jail and a maximum fine of $1,000. We have nothing against police. Our problems with legislation. Instead of Baltimore taking some time and saying, how do we holistically approach this? Let's just eradicate it. So it was literally signs that said, um, no dirt bikes, no ATVs and no stopping. Yeah, right here. No dirt bikes allowed in park by order of Rexford Parks. I grew up in the park too watching the riders, right? I grew up seeing it every Sunday. So if you're trying to get rid of dirt bike culture, you're also getting rid of my blackness. And that not only hurt, but it made me again, hate this city. And again, when I hate stuff, I fight. And that was the moment when my fight turned to let's build something. And when I built it was B360. To our youth, and on behalf of the students of Baltimore, I proclaim March 25th, 2022 as B360 Day in Baltimore and encourage all residents to join in the celebration. Congratulations. <laughs> about it is it shows people we can build it and they will come. B360 is all about teaching people how what they do in everyday life like popping willies translate into careers and opportunities whether it be STEM, motorsports, film, right growing up the industry and making sure for black people across the country we know we can do it and it's possible. What I'm hopeful is that people see us as a model of it's not just about dirt bikes, it is for any situation, any problem. To move it forward, you have to work with people closer to the problem or it's not a real solution, right? You can't be top down, you gotta be bottom up. On behalf of the citizens of Baltimore, I am pleased to salute B360 in recognition of the kickoff of your capital campaign to support building a 20 plus acre dirt bike park and an educational campus in the heart of Baltimore City. So we're currently launching a campaign called Ride for Change at rideforchange.org to fund the first ever campus in the world for dirt bikes for our style of riding. Since 2017, we served more than 8,000 students and counting. We've hired and trained more than 57 dirt bike rides and growing. And we're also the diversion program for Baltimore City. So that means for anything that's non-violent, instead of people going to jail, they can do training and program with us. So a place where people can ride indoors, outdoors, take our classes, have an auto body shop, a mechanic shop, um, and really something that exists in black neighborhoods as an investment. I knew that we did B360 right when they went from asking me was a engineer, a train conductor, and telling me nobody ever asked them what they wanted to be. To now, 15 year olds telling me what they're going to do in life. I want to be a pilot in the Navy first. I want to be a mechanical engineer. I want to be a psychiatric travel nurse. Mm -hmm. And when I get out of the Navy, I want to have my own big bike shop. But also telling more people to follow them. You know, and that's what I mean about the empowering. They were already saw it in them, like Ms. Taylor saw it in me. It was then being a catalyst to help them know what's possible. And again, that resume is along in the mind. And so what I'm most proud of is 
who they're going to become that I don't even know yet. And seeing their imprint, which they already have on community, but their imprint on the world, and the world isn't ready for them. The biggest footprint is the legacy, right? Again, that freedom. But when people think about black people from Baltimore, STEM professionals, dirt bike riders, whatever, they think about BP60. Um, and that's one of the biggest gifts and the biggest rewards and awards, period, is it's not our followers, it's none of that. It is really, we're imprinted into the culture, not just the city, but the country, that the model is right here and it's homegrown, and that's a different type of feeling.